thing. What is going on here? I love the chitter, chatter, and all the stories going on. I love that. So listen, we have Cheryl Dixon Neal with us, Canadian Gospel Music Award nominee, and she's a Hamilton resident, singer, songwriter, pianist, and a recording artist who has dedicated her life to perfecting her craft and touching the lives of many people through her music. And from the soothing sounds of her spiritually inspired, spontaneous piano performances on her new instrumental album, Precious Peace, to her deeply honest and emotional lyrics of her debut inspirational album, My Prayer, listeners are experiencing God's hope and healing through her gift of music and are inspired to overcome life's challenges through God's grace and strength. Cheryl is excited about the latest launch of her brand new single, Never the Same, which is being used as a song of hope for a cure to help raise funds for breast cancer research at Hamilton Dravinsky Cancer Center. So let's give it up for Cheryl. So Cheryl, you know, tell us a little bit about God's vision for your life through your music. Um, I believe that uh, he wants to bring peace, joy, and renewal through the gift of music. Mm -hmm. And um, the vision I got when I was preparing to do my debut album was I saw people on their knees. Uh, You know, first of all, you know when you go to a you, you want to buy a, a card for somebody and you go to Blue Mountain and you uh, pick up a Blue Mountain card and you're like, oh my goodness, that's everything Perfect. I want to say. I'll just sign my name, done. Right? That's kind of what I, I felt like this CD was going to be because I was very honest with all the songs and um, I just saw people on their knees before God just listening to the music, just with their hands up, you know, like what she said, you know? And um, so that was my vision for, uh, for my prayer. Mm. I love that. I love that. And yeah, I love, you know, the fact that we can be for real here, right? Because we're just a bunch of girls. We're just hanging out and we can be us, right? So there's no pretense. There's no none of that. Because, I mean, if you know me in like, you know, for real, for real, this is me like for real, for real. Because I can't put on. I, I just... I just don't, I don't know how. I'm not good at it. So, you know, you can be real here. You can be you. You can yeah. just enjoy and be yourself, right? Be God, who God created you to be. So, you know what? What are some of the stopping points that you've had, you know, through your life, through this, you know, in particular, I guess, over the last few years or, you know, as you've been kind of walking out this vision for your music? Well, you know, ironically, one thing I struggle with is... Uh, a lack of joy a lot of times. You know, my music's supposed to bring joy, but yet I am I have this cloud of sadness that just kind of hovers over me. I really, I have to fight through it. And um, so that's been a real a stopping point. And um, has created a lot of self-doubt, like, oh, you think your music's going to bring peace and joy? You're not even happy. Hmm. <laughs> we know where that voice is coming from, right? Like, yeah. seriously, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And isn't that always the case, though? It's, it's funny that you're, the very thing, the very gift that you have is usually the place that, you know, you're stopped at. You never notice that, yeah. right? And it's the very thing that you've been called to do, you know? I, listen, preach it, go on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is there, you know, you, we, we've talking, you know, we've spoken off camera about this and, and talking about, you know, the chatter in your head. Right? And that's what we're kind of alluding to. Yeah. You know, how many of us are stopped by the chatter in our head? You know, Aisha had spoken about it, you know, in our, our, one of our other interviews. And it's one of those things that that can be a true stopping point. Like, if you just sit there and listen to the noises that you have going on in your head, they're always going on. But it's up to us to stop it, to shut it up. Right? Speak the Word of God. You need to speak the Word of God to speak the truth. Right? And surround yourself with people who are going to encourage that truth and not the other junk that we can hear, right? Mm-hmm. So tell us a little bit about the, the, uh, the, how you overcame that chatter. Well, um, I would go to the piano and I would just, sometimes I would just play until tears were pouring down my face and peace of God would just fill the room. Kind of like when David played for Saul. Yeah. You know, I would just play and... and um, and, that, and I would worship, 
and that heaviness would li- would leave. Actually, a lot of those songs, like actually almost every song on my debut CD, came out of those personal times. At the time, I didn't know I was going to make a CD. I was just <laughs> pouring out my heart, you know. So it kind of came full circle, like um, that area of, of struggle of, of being sad brought forth all these songs. And they're kind of like psalms. Like, you know, David, when he first, at the beginning of a psalm, he'll um, say, God, where are you? And he's, mm-hmm. you know, crying his heart out. And look at, my enemies are coming. And he's creating the situation and just asking where God, where he is. And then in the middle, he starts to remember, okay, but you came for, you came through for me before. And then at the end of the psalm, he's praising God for who he is. And that's what most of the songs are like. So that's how I've overcome that lack of joy is worship. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's some people that sure struggle with a, a true depression where, not this is not a true depression, but not a chemical imbalance. To me, this is a spiritual battle for, for me. And so I know that that's my battleground is at the piano, just singing from my heart. I love that. And the fact that you can do that is just so blessed. Like, I mean, you know, our seven-year-old can play the piano, and I just, I'm impressed with him on a daily basis. He will pick up a tune, and he will just do his thing or whatever. And now what I've noticed is that he's doing it on his own. Like, we don't have to tell him that he's got to practice. He gets up, and he just does it. And now I'm starting to see what you're talking about. Like, he starts playing, like, Amazing Grace, and I'm like, does he even realize, like, what he's doing? You know, and, and he's just filling the house with joy. You know, we hear that music, and it's just like, wow, that's so cool. And the fact that he can just pick up and do it at seven, like, d- just amazes me. But anyway, that's a side note. <laughs> anyway, you're going to share one of your songs with us right now. So do you want to maybe just set it up for us, and then I'll step out of your way so you can get up sure. and Sure. Um, last year, I was asked to be part of a breast cancer ceremony. And she says, um, we want you to sing something that starts slow and solemn in the beginning and ends with feet tapping, hands clapping. you got about three minutes. Maybe you can put two songs together. don't know what you're going to sing, I'm thinking. There's no song like that. <laughs> I thought, maybe I'll write a song. Yeah, okay. I'm thinking, but I've never written from anybody else's perspective. Like, any, all my songs have just been my personal journey. So I felt to fast and pray. So I fasted for three days, and um, I interviewed several breast cancer survivors and one lady wrote me out like a, a page and a half of her whole journey of everything that she uh, went through and um, and I thought okay great uh, I'll finish the three day fast I've finished my interviews the song will come <laughs> not so easy yeah. I just kept kept pressing in kept mm-hmm. pressing in so it was about a, a week it took me a week and I mean a week like I don't know how many hours I've put into this, but uh, the song came, and I sang it at the Waterfest, which was in Hamilton. It was a dragon boating event, and there were six dragon boating teams. They were all holding hands. They're all breast cancer survivors. They were all holding hands, and uh, you could have heard a pin drop wow. down at the waterfront. Like, the presence of God just hovered wow. over top. Mm-hmm. I hear, I hear you. So, yeah, I'm humbled. I'm humbled to mm-hmm. be able to be part of it. Each of our interviews have been recorded at a live Wave TV event with your host, Tristan Burns. If you'd like to host or sponsor a Wave TV event, please visit our website at wavetv.com.